afternoon is to um, work again on transforming stuff but then at the same time on integrating and after the integration I then teach you how to work on somebody um, remotely how to work on yourself and at the end I'm teaching you the process which does all this in one go with one question um, and that's what I mainly work these days with um, and you can later on when you go home you can choose whether you continue with um, asking the singular questions. I sent you a PDF version of all the stuff we discussed discuss today and there is a process um, on the full treatment I call it with emotions, beliefs, resistance etc. Um, so you, you can choose whatever you you like. I, I love the last process because I like to go things fast. <laughs> Okay, so we have covered the emotions, the limiting beliefs, and we have covered um, resistance. Um, what we are doing now is what I call a causal or causal event. Do I pronounce that correctly? Causal event? Yeah. And that is something in your life, and we only have to do this for everything once, because something in your life happened at a certain point of time which triggered a huge blockage in a particular area and we want to figure out um, where that is and then transform it. So for this one I need you to um, visualize a line in front of you. I told you this morning that in quantum physics we uh, don't distinguish between past, present and future because it's basically always the same, it's always just now. However, in our um, way we perceive and think things, we think in a linear way. So I want, when you work with somebody on a causal event, you imagine a line in front of that person. And when we are asking for the, is there a causal event causing this blockage? What? Causal. causal, sorry, causal event blockage. Then you, in your head, visualize this line and you're starting, the starting point um, is womb to conception. Because a lot of the beliefs we are picking up or even blockages um, are already happening while we are in the womb. If our mother or father or whoever um, was around that time experienced something really traumatic or is very stressed within our pregnancy, we are picking that up as a um, fetus already. So you are asking womb to conception and then you go um, one year, five year, ten year, fifteen year. Again it's not about figuring exactly out where it is and definitely not to figure out what it is but in most cases um, there is a trigger event and that um, starts all the blockages we are experiencing. When you are, when you say you're one, one year, five year, and at five year your fingers start tingling or you feel this um, push against your hand, that's the point you stop and then you date again in your mind transformed. You only need to do that one once. You don't have to do it three times because there's only one causal, cause, causal. 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 One event for that. <laughs> again, say it one more time. Causal, causal. Okay, I just have to get it in my head. Causal oh, even. Like causal. 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 I mean, she's got an American accent. That sounds more like German. I like that causal. <laughs> I say causal, so causal sounds <laughs> more. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, it's German too. <laughs> um, yes. So we do this one only once. And then, and we can combine these two last bits. Um, then at, at the end we are asking again, are there any other blockages which we don't even define because we defined all this, uh, which we don't have any clue about. And you're asking that question three times again and transforming it. And once we've done this whole thing then, which we don't, we do the whole thing uh, at the end, but once we've done all this, we transformed everything and then we go to the integration part, which is quite a different energy and you will feel a different energy entering you in the fun part too. So that's my plan for this afternoon. Yeah, especially after lunch, somebody is usually a bit more sluggish and that's why I usually try to get you up straight away and talk a bit more when we come to the integration part. So find another partner and 
again, you, um, or you, now for the purposes of repeating it, go through mental level alpha, everything is light and information, go in your heart space, and then we are asking, is there a causa, causal event um, for this issue? And you visualize a timeline in front of the person and in your head thinking womb to conception, conception one, one to five, until you reach the point where you have a resonance and then you transform it. And then do you continue on through the ages as well? No. no. It's only one and it happens only at one time. And you start with the low and you start one to five? Or you start I start womb to conception because it could have happened while you are in the womb. So that's when um, I start. Mm -hmm. You can just say womb so as well. Womb, womb to birth. Womb to birth. Sorry, yes. Yeah. Conception happens. Okay, so in conception to womb. Yes, I'm going the other way. You can just say womb <laughs> or conception. That's fine. Conception to birth, you do that. And then you go one. No, no, it's fine. One to five, five to ten, etc. Once you've done that once, then you go straight away into asking, are there any other blockages relating to this issue? And again, you are focusing on one of your two projects. Then you switch with that person. And when you're finished, we go into integration. Yeah? Good. Find somebody you haven't worked with yet. <laughs> and what you can do before you start, guys, before you start, do some crossover high fives to activate both brain things again. Bit more energetic, come on. <laughs> person to keep their eyes open also um, yes but it's not as important as for the one who is giving it but it's definitely better because again otherwise you otherwise you could drift over, drift drift over to away. another dimension or something mm -hmm. <laughs> which is not a bad thing but for that purposes um, mm -hmm. not that helpful mm -hmm. well that was a definite something happening uh, when you were one on that particular issue, it was really strong. But it's cool. I just, lo I just love to. F I was so pleased when I started this work that I actually felt something um, because it feels straight away you can convince your mind a lot um, faster that something is working if you feel something. If you don't feel anything or you don't see anything and you don't. Um, um, hear words or something, then you sometimes really must think, or oh, nothing is working. But I love, I love the sensation in my hand, and I love the words which come up sometimes, not always. I, I am definitely feeling, you know, mm. and just being here now. So each time I'm being touched or have an issue, and then I, I can feel things happening here, and then I can also feel the issue being less and less important. Mm. And. Uh, Mm. At that time, I was kind of like asking, what can I let go of for today? 
mm. you know, to let yep. to let my life unfold yes. in a beautiful way to be uh, a contributor. Mm. Okay, so I, ca I can see that you are starting to get the hang of things. Um, it goes smooth and fine and the energy in this room is um, quite nice as well. Um, we are going into the integration part now. I told you that um, the beauty of this is first we transform the blockages and then we can integrate resources which we need, which our body needs or which our soul needs or our minds um, in order to move forward in a, in a healthier kind of way or something that helps us move forward. And that's what we do with integration. We talked this morning about the universe being um, a place of light and information or being a place of something we can't actually see with our normal senses anymore, with this zero field. And all, when we say light and information, the universe and including us is filled with millions of bits of information. And it has been stored in different fields. Has anybody of you heard of morphogenetic fields? Yeah, Robert Sheldrake as a biologist, quite controversial, but um, I love him. And he came up with the concept of morphogenetic fields. And they are basically fields with information, lots and lots of information. And you have them for different topics, for cultures, for groups like this. Everything which reaches a certain number um, is creating its own field. And we can access those fields like a computer goes onto a different database and download information we need from those fields. Um, anybody heard of that might explain it from the um, 100 monkey syndrome? For, for those of you who haven't, um, um, they have done some research. I don't actually know who did it, but they've done some research on the, um, I think it was Japanese islands with monkeys. And on all these islands were monkeys. And at some island, all of a sudden, one monkey decided to open his um, potatoes with a stone and discovered a new tool, so to speak. And um, his companions were watching and um, slowly, slowly, they observed each other. And on this particular island, all of a sudden, everybody started to using the same tool. Once it reached 100, all of a sudden, the monkeys on the other islands were doing the same without ever having any interaction with each other. So that's how Robert Sheldrick explains how the information travels via just waveforms or light and information through the universe and we pick it up through um, our minds or through our senses um, or whatever we tune into. So we have um, created a field which is called two points field and we can access that if we want to. So if you are at home, for example, and you are two pointing and you completely forget how this works and you don't have your notes there, the only thing you need to do is in your mind tune into the two pointing field and just say everything how Katrin does it. <laughs> well, it <laughs> sounds funny, but it works. <laughs> And then, your, um, then it works as well. So you download um, that information this way. But now let's say what we want is we feel, um, we go with our bodies this time, it's easier to explain. We feel we have um, some back problems. And what we really would like is a lovely stone massage or some crystals which uh, would really help us um, to relax and relax the muscle tissue. If you know the crystal stone or you are into that healing field and you know a back remedy or whatever you need, you can focus only on that. I am not so familiar with all this. I, I let my intuition guide it and I just call it resources. Any resources my body needs and I tap again in with my um, intention into that field of either um, healing crystals or Bach flower remedies or anything you can think of. There's a huge big field with the pharmaceutical industry but I avoid to tap into that one. <laughs> so anything natural is absolutely fine. And you then ask for those resources to be integrated. Because on this level 
everything is only light and information. It turns out to have um, or be a liquid in a bottle once it reached this stage, or I should say the chair when we had it, that's the matter, the manifested form. But at the end of the day, it's only on quantum level information and you can access any information just with your mind in the intention. You don't have to have it. You don't actually have to see it. Um, you just have to have the intention. That's what I, I need the resources um, and tap into that field. Morphogenetic fields are actually quite interesting. Um, the, the fields get obviously denser and bigger the, um, the older a culture is, for example. Like um, they have measured the magnetic fields on different um, parts of the globe as well. And in countries like Germany or England, um, the magnetic fields are really, really strong and very um, like there's not a lot of flexibility happening there, which does not surprise me. It's, it's an old country with very uh, long traditions, but also very strict. It's a very strict culture and very dominating culture. And in those areas, flexibility is not easy to achieve. And I think for me, that's probably the reason why my soul guided me to New Zealand, because our field here is pretty open. Um, and a lot more flexible and not so dense. So we can access other fields a lot easier if we are open to them. I think the same is for Australia. Hawaii must be an awesome place too, but um, England and Germany is definitely not the place to go if you want to open up really, <laughs> although they are getting there. Um, so the process is basically the same. Once you've done your transformation, you then connect with the person again. That person is thinking about their um, issue briefly and you then ask are there any resources that would be helpful for this issue or you think um, of a particular remedy if you know it or if that comes up again if you int if you are intuitively and all of a sudden you see a rose quartz or a different crystal then integrate that just go with your intuition but for us um, um, who, who don't have that yet, we just ask, are there any resources um, that are helpful for this issue? And instead of transforming, you wait until you find the resonance point, you integrate it this time, because you want this to enter your field instead of going out. Yeah? Shall we give that one a go? It feels quite different. So how do we know what the resources would be? You don't need to. Um, again, there is many opportunities. If you know them, you can choose them. If you don't, it doesn't matter because the impulse comes from here, the all-knowing, so to speak, and they, um, or, or this place or your soul knows what you need right now. You don't need to know. You don't need to know the problems and you also don't need to know the resources you need, um, which is, again, the nice bit. It comes in whatever... Um, your soul thinks is the best for you at that time. So those resources you're saying, the person that's receiving the two point in time, yeah. they will find those resources if they need them. Is that what you mean? Um, no, we, what we are doing, we're tapping in those fields of the resources without knowing which the resources there actually are. Um, you, unless you are familiar with certain um, healing modalities or techniques, or you have an image in your head straight away of a green emerald, then you integrate that. But if you have, don't have any of this, we are just open and ask for resources. So we're integrating the energy, we're not actually, the person's not going to physically... No, it. no, yeah, that's, that's it. We are, inf uh, we are integrating the information of that. Yes? So the person will think about their issue or whatever it is, Mm -hmm. And we're just doing that step of uh, we're just doing the in resources that might integrate into that person's healing. Or we're starting from the top and doing the transformation. No, we are starting with this because um, uh, we still have a little bit to go. We do the whole process once we went through the last two bits, which is the resources and the. Um, integrating of the future self and then we go through the whole process but now when you find a person now you only integrate resources 
What can happen, for example, if you integrate resources to that person, that person uh, might tomorrow um, find, uh, pick up a brochure of um, uh, a bowing technique, for example, or uh, Reiki and think, oh, this looks really interesting. Um, I might need this. And then you should follow that instinct and go for it. But for now, for us, we don't need to know what it is, um, where it comes from. We just, the intention is there to, to connect with the field of resources or the information of it and integrate that. That's all we want. Again, there's only focus on intention which makes that happen. And then after that we, yeah, I think we do that because it's new and then I do the future self. This is a bit more to explain again. But you understand the difference between transforming and integrating now. We are just integrating now. Yeah, forget the, the rest for now. And you can straight away go into it and ask without the rest, is there any resources relating to this topic? And then you integrate. See, see how that feels. And it, try again to find somebody you haven't worked with yet, if that is still possible. So in one way, uh, when we ask for transformation, we're just calling to the universe to melt some not. Yes. So, in a way. And yes. We don't know how, and we nope. don't know how the knot got there, but we can conjecture, but still, really, 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 we don't know. Yes. And it's not important to know. Yeah. We don't want to... F Even if we think we know, we don't yeah. know. No. <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> And it's good not to know. It's only a made-up answer. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, my mother was this way. Oh, yeah, my yeah. childhood was that way. Oh, wait, yeah, my brother hit me on the head. Mm. Yeah. What does that mean, right? Yes. But then now we're just doing something else and saying, well, let's see it concrete. I mean, I'm asking these questions. You know? mm. uh, let's just see it happen as a result of a Reiki or as a result of a vacation or as a result of a education or as a result of saying yes to something unexpected that takes my life in a totally different way. Yes. And so we're saying, well, what are the resources, you know? And we mm. are still, in a way, asking this unknown, you know, mm. the one we ask to transform it. Mm. And now we're going to call it the morphic field that has all resources, something like that. Yes. No. Yep. No. And again, we call it, as you say, the morphic field because somebody again gave it a name. Right. Um, however, you interpret right. it as, as, as really not of relevance. Right. Um, so to me, morphic field just means connection without material. Yes. You know, there's no waves, there's no uh, forces, there's no energies really that we no. can tell about, but somehow there's a connection anyway. Yes. You know, and whatever that is, mm. it's like what makes the birds fly south to the same place every year. Uh, we don't know what it is, right? There's no, no physical thing, right? But it. just by our focus on it, we have the connection. Yeah, right. Yeah, that is the connection. We focus yeah. on something that creates the connection. Or in a way, and we're just asking for the connection because we don't even know how to focus on it as an object. It's not an object, right? Yeah, no, no what I mean is just um, instead of focusing on a transformation, we're focusing on integration. And then we, we name it um, by saying resources. When I say, when I personally say resources, I straight away think morphogenetic field. If you mm -hmm. say resources, you might think um, something else. Yeah, my bank account. Something like that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I definitely don't my, think my about that. <laughs> my resources are kind of feeble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mine you can't touch and feel and not see anything, numbers yeah. on the piece of paper anyway. Yeah. Um, so that's what I mean, we, we focus on, on, on that. But we are definitely asking for... Uh, first of all, we're asking whether we actually need resources. Sometimes for certain things you don't, don't actually need anything. But if there is a yes, then you just integrate whatever the universe does provide at that point. And it is usually just an information coming through, which then manifests itself in either it is already happening um, and you don't need anything physical and or you just recognize it. Or you oh, recognize wow, it. It's yes. Happening. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yes. And you can celebrate it and somehow yeah. not say no to it, right? Yes. Or you, you or do. you just, um, uh, you know, all of a sudden you realize the next um, time you're actually touching a cup of coffee, you feel, mm, I don't actually think I want this coffee. And that is just um, another process of it. So resources was that um, you actually don't need so much coffee. It's 
blocking whatever uh, is blocking within you and without you forcing the issue saying I really don't bring any more coffee you recognize oh I actually don't want it now and the other thing is as I said before you can meet tomorrow somebody um, who is an interesting Reiki healer or somebody who is uh, or you read a book and all of a sudden read something about crystals and you feel um, drawn, to it. drawn to it. So then, in a that's way, you're following the energy, you're following the chakra. Exactly, and that's what it is. It's a good ex- uh, uh, expression uh, about giving up coffee because you know a lot of us have said, "Oh, yeah, I don't need this coffee, and, and uh, it's actually not doing me all that well, and I can't speed it. I'm speeding too much already." Yeah. And then we drink another cup, right? Yes. And then five years go by, and we yeah. say that every day, maybe. Yes. You know? <laughs> so then, the, 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 what this process could do, I yeah. mean, if it could really unlock yes. how to get a good idea into a felt sense. Yes. Mm. Oh, that's a nice way of expressing it. Yes. Yeah, because yeah. Uh, so many things are already logical, right? Mm. And we hold them in our mind as like, oh, that would be a good idea. I'm going to yeah. stop smoking. I'm going to stop drinking coffee. Yeah. I'll just get off of all stimulants, you know. Yes. But it doesn't. But then another stimulant is there and say, well, I just want to jam. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and it's uh, it became already so habitual that we do it by habit and because yeah, most of the time we don't actually drink the coffee um, because we want it it's such a social thing these days if you are yeah. within a group yeah, let's have a coffee together and yeah. you drink one although you didn't really want one I used to be uh, live in Italy so I had a lot of espresso ah, you know yes. and I got used to espresso and then that was the only way I drink coffee yeah and then it was too strong for me so then I started drinking latte yeah and I, and so then, it, and that's really interesting because I don't like milk and I don't like coffee. But I drink <laughs> latte, you know, together somehow they can some of the bad parts out, you know, or something, or I don't know what. <laughs> but that's, that's really interesting with tea too. Like, I don't like black tea, but I drink black tea with milk and sugar every morning. Yeah. If you only gave me the black tea, I wouldn't touch it. If you give me the milk and sugar, you probably wouldn't like that either. <laughs> well, I, I usually don't do normal milk anyway because I feel, I now notice that it's actually not good for me. Yeah. Um, but none of these things are good for me. If I start my, my day with an orange juice or with a smoothie, I feel 10 times better. But I'm still in, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm still doing it. So yeah. I, that hasn't quite clicked I yet. I did some processes in New Zealand. Like I, I really got in touch with uh, that my body is my ticket to be here. Yeah. And that my body is really, uh, it's actually, I kind of understood what ancestor worship was in a way. Because like this is my ancestor, yeah. right? Because I don't own this DNA, right? Yes. This is the gift that I've been given, right? And then I, I actually made a pledge to honor it and just... Uh, do everything for it, right? Yeah. As as I would say, like if I was worshiping my ancestors. Yes. If I, you know, I never used to believe that, you know, mm. because I thought, well, what do these Chinese do? What do these uh, indigenous cultures do? All this ancestor worship, I didn't understand it because mm. I always thought ancestors were guys that made a lot of mistakes and are long gone, right? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And then I kind of had this feeling, but still I'm drinking coffee, so I'm not really. It's still not a good idea. It's a good idea. I made a pledge. I prayed. I made a prayer. But it hasn't really connected yet. Gosh, that's so oh, yeah. strong. So then you can ask me uh, uh, what resources there are for that, for uh, for for following my pledge. I mean, no. So then I, uh, in order to enter into this uh, into this phase of it, yeah, uh, asking for not transformation but for resources. integration, integration, integration. So then, uh, as me as a subject would hold something that I wanted to integrate. Um, if you do it on yourself, yes, but otherwise um, you just think again about your problem because I'm asking are there any resources that would be helpful yeah. to deal with yeah. this problem? So if you already think well, about what then, you want. my problem be like I, I promised myself that I would take utmost care of me and, then, and I find I'm not really doing it. And yeah. You know, and, I, and how could I, what would the resources be? No, you don't think about the resources, no. I think about them. Okay. You don't think about them. But I mean, I won't think about them, but I mean... If you, way, if you work on your own, which we do at the end, then you can think, you know, okay, are well there any... Okay, well then you don't really tell anyone, I'm working for transformation, I'm working for beliefs, I'm working for emotions, I'm working for uh, uh, resources or mm. uh, integration. You don't even say that, right? You, no. just, you just follow your intuition? Yes, I do. Uh-huh. And I do it now in the, in the one and all. I do the whole package in one uh-huh. go. Ah. But I teach so you that at the end. Teach that a little at a time. Yes, right? it's, um, yeah. th- this process is only because we need to practice it and practice it and practice it and understand it more. I see your arm go out like this, you know, yeah. kind of like you're teaching that. But then at the end, when you feel like a completion, you take it in and, and then kind I of, kind of wave it away. Yes. Break it away. Right? Yeah.
and but it doesn't. Them. That's that's only it's how I do really it. It's not. No, 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 no. Cutting away from it. No, I know it, a wave has has gone in, and then I'm, instead of just letting the arm fall, I just like doing this. Right, I think I call them back. Okay. All right. Yes. Okay. Good. Good. Thank you. Thank you. How did that go? Felt very different. That feels different, doesn't it? Did you say too easy? <laughs> Don't want to hear that. <laughs> That's perfect like that. <laughs> um, alrighty, the last thing we integrate, and this is one of my favorites, is the future self. When we are at the beginning talking about um, that we have those layers of the body, the emotion, the belief, and the soul on this level, when we are integra integrating our future self, we are integrating with this part here. And the future, again, like there are multiple different future selves of us. It's not just one. There's never just one solution and there's never just one future self because there's so many different paths you will be going until you get to that point. Um, sometimes you say yes, sometimes you say no, sometimes go right and left and so many decisions lead up to a particular future self. And if you one time would go one time more left, you would end up somewhere else. So there are different future selves. The one we want to connect with, and we do automatically, is the one which is our so-called, in this lifetime, ideal future self. You can believe this philosophy or not, but I personally, honestly, don't just say it. I do believe that this body is only one part of me being on this planet. I do believe we are all spiritual beings. We are this, um, and we have this body to experience with our senses, which our spirit and our soul doesn't have, um, how life on this planet Earth works. But the body is the smallest part and definitely not the... Um, most important, so to speak. So our soul, when you are born here, um, again, I believe you, everybody has a special gift. Have you ever experienced that you do something, it don't, doesn't matter what it is, whether it's a hobby or, um, or a work or something, and you really love doing it? And with love, I mean, you forget everything around you. You have no idea where the time has gone. It's like almost the feeling like you had when you were the first time in love. <laughs> uh, you know, the, the love you really enjoyed, I should say. So the first, imagine you do something right now um, and there is something in you that, that is that part uh, and you would experience every day as if you would be completely in love with that thing. That's what your soul wants you to do. And I believe a lot of us are really waking up to that. We are opening up to there must be something else than me just going to work every day. And not saying this is bad, but if you go to work feeling dragged, is a difference as if you would go to work and feeling really uplifted, empowered and inspired. So when we integrate the future self, we are connecting with this part. And what then happens is um, that part is pulling you automatically and guiding you by the pulling towards which direction you should be going um, to actually do what you really want to do, what your gift is, what your, um, I don't call it destiny or purpose, that's too much for me already, but your gift or this, what, what, you, what you do which makes you feel just really wonderful. Because if you feel so awesome and wonderful, as we said, we are all interconnected, you have a huge impact on everybody else around you too. And I guarantee you too, if you are feeling that way, you won't get sick because there's no resistance. You don't complain about long hours because you love what you do. So you don't even think, I want to go home now. And that's what's pulling you. And um, if you listen to it intuitively and also consciously, there will be little in pieces of information popping up your way once you start this work. And you only have to do a two-pointer once in order for this to start happening. Um, if you do it more often, you will get clearer. You will all of a sudden have a thought where you say, ooh, that's new, that's really different. I have not thought that 
thing before or this way before. That is something new. And the idea for us is to recognize those changes. Don't, no, not don't. Um, body, that's a good example again. If we are f having a sore knee, and now we are saying, okay, the two-pointer, she said the two-pointer works on my sore knee, so I'm two-pointing my sore knee, and I am now focusing on my knee and checking, is that changing? No, it's not changing, it's still sore. It's not working. Bang, what have you done? You have uh, negated it to start with, but B, you have um, again confirmed your self-image that you... Um, are not good enough or something, and that's why this stuff is not working. And you also didn't listen to what I told you before, because I said, this is only like the chair, the biggest matter from us. We are more like, um, we are not just the body, we are a lot more. So the impulse from the two-pointer comes on this quantum level, light and information, and then works its way through your layers. So if you have an underlying problem to your knee problem, which you most likely have, it will be stored here and here. And on those levels, it's starting to work. But until it reaches the body, it will take some time. It doesn't have to be, but it can. So if we only now focus on the body and don't recognize maybe there's something uh, in our emotions, if we are not open and looking what is changing and just focusing on what we want to change, we cannot see that there's lots of work happening um, and we negate this process by saying, oh, it's not working. Uh, uh, knees can, uh, like uh, sore knees or, or problems with knees can relate to issues with authorities. Um, so I had many of those and, and that had to do with my belief systems. So until those belief systems are not dissolved, um, I personally will very likely to have ongoing problems with my knees on the body level. But I'm, I'm working with this and it's getting less and less. Um, again, another thing is I have um, something in my right hip over years and years and years. I'm not focusing on the pain in the hip. I'm focusing on what else is changing. Some of my relationships have changed. All of a sudden I got a job opportunity coming in. Um, something happened um, in my family circumstances. Things are changing and I notice the different things I'm thinking uh, and, and the real new thoughts that are coming in and the ideas which are coming in. And this is what we want to um, look at. We want to widen our scope and not limit ourselves to working on um, a problem in the body and focusing is this body work, is this now disappearing or not. Uh, do you understand that? That's really, really important um, to, to wait um, and to realize the changes anywhere, not just on the area where you were um, focusing on. And our future self is actually helping us with that. And in my case, um, I connected um, with my future self, and that's the reason, I believe, why I was courageous enough um, to start my magazine, which I never, ever would have done if I wouldn't have done this work, because I would have thought, I can't do this, and I don't have any money, and I don't have any background, and why me? And I just had the idea one day in my shower, and it was different, and it felt good, and I thought, yes, this is really what I want to do. And then the left brain kicked in and said, no, you can't do this because da da but, 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 but. Uh, and any time, any time I did this, my future self gave me another kick by letting me meet another person who started a conversation and said, complain so much about the magazines which are out there and I wish there would be somebody who does produce another magazine which is positive. This is what I'm meaning was your future is pulling you. Um, and so any time I moved in that direction again, things fell into place and, and, and now um, it's, re it's a reality. Um, so this is one, another really beautiful um, aspect of this tool or of this work. I really, really like it. And it will um, strengthen your intuition. And once you trust it, once you have one 
bigger kind of thing happening, you trust it and you won't stop doing it. So we are now um, uh, connecting with this future self. And again, because we are thinking linear, we are now seeing the line in front of the person again uh, as, a, as a linear thing. But we don't have to ask the person how old they are because it's not important. <laughs> we just imagine this is the person now and that's the future in front of them since we are thinking linear. And then we are asking for, we would like to connect with the future self where all this has already been dissolved. And then you go closer to the person and closer and closer. And whenever you don't even have to say numbers and whenever you feel a resonance, then you integrate that. Yeah? Any questions? Is that again what we're thinking? You are thinking, you are asking the, for the future self, where, for this person, where all this stuff they are thinking about is already be transformed or dissolved. Yeah. And then you go clo on that line, you go closer, and when you feel there's a resonance and I'm somehow transforming somebody here, um, then you in integrate it. <laughs> yeah? That's a really cool thing to do. So let's do that, and then we have a full... Um, what I call um, a full treatment after that, where we go through each single step, where we are not, not finished then, but we have to kind of keep moving. <laughs> Still more to come. Okay? Any other questions? No? Good. Find somebody again and just do the integration of the future self. So when we talk of a future self, then in a way we're saying it's already done, so somehow we're... we're disempowering the, f the idea of the future because we're, s we're looking at uh, um, you said that uh, no I wouldn't call it disempowering I, um, I as a first of all in quantum physics there is no future but what there is is there's different dimensions and different realities so y there are your, your um, past, present and future is basically all happening at the same time but you in different forms, in different dimensions, right. depending on the choices. And the dimensions are like your focus, right? Yes. Or like they're, di uh, would you call them believed in realities? Yes, exactly. And there in are the many. Lives. It's not just no, this whatever one. Whatever you want to believe in, right? Exactly, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you got UFOs and all that stuff, and then you yep. should concentrate on that, right? Yes, and you can do, this is what I do um, in the, in the um, advanced seminars, is we can do quantum jumping. We can go into other dimensions and meet our other part of us who made different decisions to what we have done today and ask them for guidance. That's another more visual uh, and concrete way to connect with a future self, which is not the future as, as we perceive it, because we can only think linear, but it's a future at the same time in another reality of one part or aspect of me which made different decisions to what I did here in this. In a way, it's like going to the so-called morphic field and asking for resources, but this is more specific, going to your future self or another part of you. Or yes. Or, or someone that has uh, uh, an interest in you, let's say, yep. an angel or a guide or something, and just asking for their resources. Yes. Or to say, I know those resources are out there, channel them to me. Yes. With your help. Yep, exactly. Uh -huh. That's what it is. And it, it comes back down to understanding nobody, nothing is separate from each other. Everything is connected. So this body here is connected with that angel or with that future self or with that morphogenetic field. It's, only, it's all one. It's just how uh, the, in the channel for me um, to communicate and interact uh, initially is the focus and the intention which you mainly do with your mind to start with but ultimately it's the heart and that's when people start working more intuitively right. it's all just opening up your heart and that's almost it like the heart is where you know when we feel it, each other we know it yes. we can reflect it because you know we feel each other's pain that's, yes. We feel each other's happiness too, of yes. course. Yeah. You know, even the happiness of a kitten, we yep. can feel. You yes. Know? Yeah. So then we know that the, the we can that feeling is we're one. In yes. Feeling, or we or we can say we reflect. Yes. You know, or yeah. we resonate or something like that in yeah. feeling in the feeling world. Mm. But then if we just say we're all one and we're just in our mind, then that seems like oh that's a good idea. I hope sometime I I know about it a little bit more than I do now, or sometimes I believe in it, right? But you know, in other words. 
how to get it again, like we, I was saying before, like how to get a good idea to be a felt sense. Yes. A and known felt sense. Yes, an experience, yeah, right. which is different to the intellectual understanding. Right. And the experience comes only from the heart. Yeah. Uh, I can intellectualize everything. I can intellectualize, I can understand what the disappearance of the universe means or what quantum physics means. That still doesn't give me that experience. Once I experience it, I know it yeah. on a complete different level. So that's in a way a wonderful thing that I'm picking up in this course because uh, in a way you're saying, okay, we're going in with our head, right? Just Initially. trust it. Yeah. Just do it, and then uh, it's almost like you're saying that we're connected anyhow, even if we're not paying any attention to it. Right? Yes. So the heart is open anyhow, even though we're not paying attention to it. Yes. And so then it's acting, and just trust that. And so then. And the more you consciously open the heart, or being open to the heart, being open, the more you have those experiences. Say that again, because you know when you said. You, well, when you were saying no, that. Hold on a second, yeah. You said consciously open the heart, and yeah. I was thinking, oh yeah. And then you had added and changed it. Yes. Changed, you flipped it around, I think. Yeah. And saying that the heart allow, allowing, or just realizing the heart is already open. Maybe, I don't know what. Well, you were saying the heart is already open. We all are interconnected, yeah. and that um, that well, is that true. That must be a fact of life, right? Yes. However, we managed to actually block our hearts and close the doors at least in our minds and that's why we feel separate that's why we feel disconnected and that's what I mean you have to make a conscious effort of removing those doors and and be open to that feeling or that experience again to know we are actually not separate in a way like uh, it's really a vital thing to close your heart because otherwise we couldn't mi we couldn't mistreat each other right <laughs> and we say we're so used to mistreating each other well that's only belief system the mistreating it's a perception you put out there yeah. and then it happens yeah. So anyhow, uh, yeah and what is mistreating it's again a judgment yeah, but you know, I, I don't you know. Go, if you go we really say, deep. We could say it's a judgment and we don't know exactly what yeah. mistreating is, but we, mm. I, don't, I don't feel to say it doesn't exist. No, but the, um, um, I mean, that's what the bravery of, um, if I'm not religious or anything, but I use it as a metaphor, what Jesus managed to do is he saw yes. the light in everybody no matter what they reacted in front of us in our so-called reality. He knew on this, we are all spiritual beings here uh, in a physical body. So he knew the light part of us so and that's what he chose to he see. Well, I don't know, he, he was explaining uh, his experience. Yes. Because he was experiencing in the connection. Because yes. he was not disconnected. He exactly. Wasn't separate, right? Yeah. So he was feeling everybody. Yeah. Right? Yes. And then when he put it into words, people... Misinterpreted it quite a bit. Well, then they just went with the words. Mm. Yeah. When he was really saying, open your heart. Yes. And, and allow what's there to, to be full in your life. Yes. Exactly. Beautiful. I have to move on with them. Yeah, it is. Hello. Okay, so um, what we are doing now is we are running through the whole so-called fall treatment and you do it um, with a partner. Each of you runs through the whole process and I guide you through the first one so we know how, what we're doing and the second one um, you try on your own. And um, I really then, and this is a choice of yours, I know this is a lot of um, information to take in and I don't want to confuse you, but once we've done this, I would like you, uh, or I would like to show you the um, next step, which I then learned later, where you do this whole process in one go. Um, and I don't want to confuse you, but it's a really nice thing and if you then choose, you only want to work with that one, you can. And this is mainly for see it as training purpose or trying how to walk and then I show you how we can run. Um, and then I also would like to go on how we actually um, integrate that into our daily lives because that's the key um, to do it. What you don't use, you lose. <laughs> yeah? Okay, open to that. Then we just go through this um, a couple of times. I guide you through the first one. And we do the whole process with mental level alpha, blah, blah, blah. And then I show you the quick version afterwards. And we talk about integration. Yeah? Good. Find a partner, please.
And Richard, I think you have to work with someone now because CJ just came. The person who is receiving is just thinking briefly about their blockage, we call it, energy blockage. And the other person in their heads is thinking mental level alpha, everything is light and information, dropping into your heart, thinking about me, dolphin, you, I don't know what. <laughs> Yeah, as soon as you have that, that laugh, it opens, I can feel it. And then we are asking, we are connecting with the person on the shoulder and we are asking, are there any emotions related to this topic? And we do all, uh, the whole thing only once. And then you try to find the point and when you feel a resonance, you state transformed in your head Breathe and let the wave come through. Is it just one thing to make it this person? No, no, just wait. I guide you through. Should we do that now? Yeah, I thought you're doing it. No, I don't know. Okay, do that now. <laughs> and whoever has done it, just don't do it again. <laughs> Okay, once you've done the emotions, you are now asking, are there any limiting beliefs related to this topic? And then you visualize a line in front of the person and you are asking, is there any causal event related to this topic? And you go from conception to birth <laughs> and so on. And then you are asking, are there any other blockages related to this topic? Okay, and now we are integrating. So you are asking, are there any resources uh, which would help to solve this issue? And this time, when you find the resonating point, you are integrating it. So you state integrate in your mind.
And then you visualize the timeline in front of the person and you are asking to, <coughs> for the connection with the future self where all this has already been resolved. And you start out there somewhere and come closer to the body and when you feel a point just say integrate. And after you've done that, you swap. Okay, I guide you through one more time. Can you just swap? Okay, in your head, mental level alpha for the one who's giving it. Everything is light and information. Connecting with understanding. This is the level we are working on. Going into your heart, feeling grateful for that everything is already been resolved. Then connecting with the person who is thinking about their topic. And then asking, are there any emotions related to this topic? And once you find it, transformed thinking in your head. And then you ask, are there any limiting beliefs related to this topic? And the giver, please remember to try and keep your eyes open. Then you visualize a line in front of the person and you are asking, is there any causal event related to this topic? And you are starting out there with conception to birth, one to five, and go closer to the body. And whenever you feel that resonance point, you transform it by stating transformed. And then you can ask, are there any other blockages related to this topic? Okay, and then we integrate. So you are asking, are there any resources 
that would be helpful to resolve this issue. And when you find the resonating point, you state integrate. And then you visualize a timeline again in front of the person and you are asking for the connection with the future self where all this is already being resolved. And when you find that point, then you state again, integrate. Now we do something fun, but you have to... Oh, you can stay where you are when you do it. Just swap again. Now the work is on you. So we're starting with Kathleen, and you will state the first thing. You will guide everybody and just say mental level alpha. And, oh sorry, we do the one, the one who's giving. Yep. You say the first thing, you say the second thing, you say the third thing. That m and try, try not to look there. I just want to make sure, and even if you're you know, not sure, it doesn't really matter, talk to your partner. I just want to make sure you really know um, the process, so to speak, without having to look on notes. And being playful opens you up again. So you can start to guide them. Okay, find another partner, and then I sh uh, you can stand there, and then I show you the fast version. Yes, I know, I want to stand like this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Find somebody. Oh, you work with Richard then. Okay, so the f um, fast version is actually quite fun too. Uh, ooh, yes, we'll stay here. <laughs> My leash, limiting. You have the person standing in front of you, and then you visualize a card house in front of them like playing cards, and you, like you stack them up. Uh, have you ever done that as children? Yep. And you see that, that uh, card house in front of that person, which represents all of this. And then you are asking, which of these cards do I need to pull out in order for the whole card house to collapse? <laughs> you can also ask, what is the central solution point, if you prefer that? I told you before, there are always plenty of solution points. There is just a central solution point to collapse or to work through all this in one go. I prefer the card version, it's fun and I can actually see it in my head. So you say, which card do I need to pull? And you visually actually can uh, imagine pulling that card, but you do it by finding that point, and when you have it, you transform again. And after that, we do the, the um, this is transforming all blockages in one. And then we just integrate the resources and integrate the future self, and that's the fast version of this. Okay? You visualize this card place and think, which of these cards do I need to pull in order for the whole card house to collapse? And then you try to find that place with 
your hand and when you feel the resonance point in your head you pull but here you just stay stayed transformed And then you do the resources in the future self like before. Integrate resources and integrate future self. Okay. You can stay, can stay where you are if you want. I just show you now how you do it on yourself. Um, because you uh, will not always have somebody with you. And on some issues it's quite nice to work on yourself. So I use my left hand and just put it on my heart and then I uh, and that's my connection point because that connects with my status quo and my where I feel I am um, and with the thought I have in my head about that topic or issue and my other hand I do exactly the same thing as I would do with the other person I just start out here and then I um, come closer to my body when I work on myself and I feel and um, inclined to put it somewhere on my body. Obviously, you can comfortably do that because it's your body. Um, but you ask the same questions. We just can do uh, maybe the um, limiting beliefs. There's always limiting beliefs. Um, so you think about your issue, what you are having now, and then you are asking, are there any limiting beliefs related to this issue? And you try to find it with that hand. You can hold it on your here as well, but I usually like it here. And when you feel the resonating point, you stayed exactly the same, you just stayed transformed. Initially, I found it actually. Um, more challenging to feel something myself than I feel on other people. I always connect, when I work with others, I feel it straight away. And with me, I had to work through some resistance first to actually feel something. But that's how you work um, on yourself. And then um, if you now have somebody who you would like to work on, but they are not present here, they are somewhere else. Um, A, I always suggest you ask for permission if you can to work with them. Not everybody is open to it. If you, for any reason, can't ask them, you and you are um, able to connect with soul or with spirit, ask their spirit if they would be okay for you to work on them. But otherwise, you just visualize them uh, like a holographic image in front of you and do it the same way as if they would be physically standing in front of you. I resort sometimes to using my teddy bear because I find it easier. <laughs> I put him on my laps and then I have something to connect with uh, and pretend that's the person I want to work on. So that's another option. But you can, if you're very visual, you can just visualize the person in front of you and work on them. And the reason why I say it's good to ask them, if they are really intuitive, um, they feel this work. Um, as you know, everything and everyone is interconnected and distances um, play no um, relevance whatsoever in quantum physics. So if somebody is very receptive to that work, they actually could fall backwards or all of a sudden feel a bit uh, funny. And if they're driving a car or they're operating a big truck or something, it wouldn't be so um, useful to happen. So therefore, we, we usually ask for permission. And if somebody says anyway they're totally closed, there's not that much you can do even if you wanted to work on them. Um, okay, you can um, have a seat and we just uh, talk about integration now, on daily integration. By the way, you can do this work on yourself also when you're sitting. You don't have to stand. 
Um, when we start working with it, I usually prefer to stand because you feel a lot more than when you are sitting. You can also lie, doing lying down in bed. I don't feel a thing when I'm lying on my back doing it. I know it works, but I don't feel anything. So I, I always prefer to stand, but you can do it sitting. Um, if you work with somebody who um, has back problems and they want to sit, let them sit or they can lie down if you work on them. Um, that, that's not a problem at all. The other area I apply it to is groups. You can work with that field of a group. We were talking about these morphogenetic fields, but we here ourselves, since we are all interconnected and have um, the purpose of being together at the workshop, you are a field. So before I um, um, came this morning, and in fact I did it last night, I two-pointed this whole workshop and the group as well. So I, I'm, I'm not, um, again, I'm not saying, oh, I want everybody to listen perfectly yeah, and, permission. pardon me? You can ask for permission. Uh, <laughs> I work, <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, work, I don't say, you know, I don't want anybody to ask questions and I want them all to really like it or anything like that. That's a thought with an attachment. What I work on is that I asked for everybody to come and learn whatever they needed to learn today from this and to hear whatever they needed to hear because not everybody hears the same. It's quite interesting. Most of the things we hear in a workshop, 70% um, we forget anyway, and 10% of what we think we heard we didn't even talk about. <laughs> and the very little bit we are is just exactly what you really needed to hear and what you wanted to hear. So you all hopefully got it perfectly. So. Um, <laughs> Uh, as another example, um, again, my soccer team, and as you can hear, I'm very into my soccer. I uh, coached my son since 11 years, and last year, the year before, I coached the rep team, the 16th grade rep team, and we went to a tournament. And I am very competitive, but I did know this work already. Um, and I did not two point, I want to win, or we want to win. I didn't do that. I two pointed on everybody having a fantastic time, the best experience, being safe, and I included the opposition, the referees, the parents, everybody who was there, that was my intention, um, that, that I wanted this. And interesting enough, we got exactly that out of it. We did not come first, but everybody in the team, and I know them all since years, um, has said this was the best tournament they ever attended to. I actually did some of this work with them, with 16-year-old boys, would you believe it? And they were really into it. Yes? So how can you two-point a kid of time about something like that rather than a problem? Like how can There's this integration. Is this um, um, and asking the right questions. So first of all, um, I visualize the group in front of me. And then this left hand is, again, uh, the group as it is. And then I state and say what I would like for this group at that tournament is um, the best experience, being healthy, no accidents, that kind of stuff. And then I say, and everything in a way of this, and which is a blockage to this, I transform that away. And after that, I integrate all resources necessary for us to have an awesome experience. That's how I, how I did this. Um, I also taught um, a couple of classes at St. Joseph School um, and taught the teacher how to integrate that into her classroom and how she can, before she even goes into the classroom, integrate the group energy. And um, she said it was amazing over time that the kids were more attentive, um, more receptive and actually more alert just by her doing that kind of work. So any, um, if you have an exam coming up or a test or an interview or anything which might make you a bit anxious, you can um, two-point that as well. First of all, um, you state your anxiety and transform that away and then you integrate that you would like to be relaxed, um, find the right answers at the right time or whatever comes and you integrate that. It doesn't mean that everything will run smoothly and perfect. And again, as I said, when we two point on something, please do not just focus on, on the problem or what you've two pointed it on. 
be aware of the changes and expect the unexpected rather than looking at, oh, this is what I want and is it changing? No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. Uh, there's always something happening, but you might not look in the right direction. When um, I worked with a couple of people with frozen shoulders, uh, which they had for a long time, um, what they noticed is a change in their relationship. And the underlying problem was some control problems in that relationship, one wanting more control over the other. That changed first. They noticed it later on, the frozen shoulder changed, but that came last. And it comes last because it's the densest form of, of this energy. And usually, as I said, the impulse comes from here and works its way through here. If you don't have any uh, resistance or any negative beliefs or any emotions, if you only have really something on your body, um, then it can happen really quickly that you see a result here. But most of the time it takes some time to work through these layers before it reaches the body. And what I really would like uh, more people to understand is that our body, when we start feeling pain in our body, it actually means that we have not listened to other aspects which were niggling at us for a long time. Because the body is the last resort for the soul to say something is not working. And it's like a kick in the guts if you didn't listen that you're always angry or always sad or um, that something isn't um, flowing in energy. And at some point the soul has no um, option anymore, so something happens in your body. But I wish more people would pay attention earlier. We don't need to get sick or unhealthy or call it whatever we call it. Okay, daily integration is now really important. Every tool and every language you learn is useless unless you actually do use it. Um, I'm a perfect example. I did speak relatively fluent Spanish uh, about 25 years ago and I can just say two or three sentences now because I'm not using it. I used to have a boyfriend at that time which was a great motivation to learn the language but then that left and now um, I guess I need another boyfriend in Spain <laughs> in order to pick the language up again but um, you have an awesome tool on your hand now but you need to use it in order um, to really integrate it. So what I do in the, or what I suggest in the morning, and I send you that routine separately from the notes, when you wake up in the morning, um, you usually, hopefully at least, um, brush your teeth and have a shower, some form of that, don't you? So this is being part of that. When you're in the shower, it only takes a minute. When you're in the shower, you are visualizing, you, you're um, two-pointing, you're saying, okay, I'm connecting now, with my future self, which is going to bed tonight, here in this bedroom. And I would like this future, um, um, future self to have had an energetic, um, re re resistance-free, whatever you want this day to be, um, day. And anything in the way of this, and any blockages in the way of this, you two-point away. So that's what you do in the morning. Um, and before you, and it's usually a good thing in the morning because when you wake up and you are still in that sleepy state, you are very likely to go really quickly into alpha. You're not quite in beta yet. So it's a perfect um, thing to do it. Then when things come up during the day, and there will be things coming up, um, popping up right into your face, which push your buttons, uh, whatever buttons that are, just two point them. If you are sitting in a group and you don't want to be um, called a nutter because you always suddenly stand up and do this, <laughs> um, just excuse yourself and go to the bathroom and do it there or just go outside. Later on, the more you do this work, at some point you will be able to do it in your head and then you don't need your hands and nobody needs to call you a nutter. Yes? When you say two point that issue, yeah. your boss calls are really not to be hit. How do you two point something like situational like that? Your boss calls you something and you only allow him to affect it, uh, affect you if you react to it. So what's your reaction? Let's ex as an example. My reaction would be stress. Okay, I'm stress. Gonna, I'm gonna day, how am I gonna do that? Yeah, you're right in that stress, in that moment, 
and focus on the stress. I'm stressed because my boss um, just, I really don't like it. And now you two point, um, depending on which one you choose, if you choose the card, cardboard thingy, then you do it all in once. If you feel this is a very strong emotion, you could just say, um, are there any emotions related to those topics where they are and transform them. Yeah, it, that would be really, um, really cool to do it right on the spot. However, if this happens to you and you have no chance to do it right on the spot, do it in the evening before you go to bed because then you can bring up that memory. It's still there. If you react it, if you allowed that comment to upset you, remember it's your responsibility. Nobody's out there doing it, you accepted this and you reacted towards it, you can go home and uh, work on it at home. You bring that up quickly and then you two-point it away. So that's what you do during the day and in the evening, before you go to bed, you two-point all the blockages which are left, which you haven't had a chance to two-point on the day before you go to bed and then you integrate the most rejuvenating beauty sleep uh, uh, cells getting healthy you feeling energetic when you get up in the morning and that's what you do in the evening and in between what will happen or at least I know that from experience and from other people those two things you were working on today will pop up in some form or another and it depends on how long you have been working with those things already. There may be, um, like uh, the thing with my father, I had therapy, I had all sorts of different things working with the issues with my father and I think the two-pointing was kind of the last straw to let that one go, so that was a big one. But if you have a topic which is bugging you for some time but you have already done it with other uh, workshops or other things, it will still pop up to you. And that's good because it means um, A, you are aware of it. The pattern is right in front of your face to show you, okay, do you still want this? Now you can make that free will choice. Now you can say, no, that doesn't serve me anymore. And then you transform it um, and two point it away. If it's not coming into your face, again, you have no idea what's going on. You can only change things you are really aware of. So those things will pop into your face and they come um, as often as needed. Sometimes they start um, like, um, what is it, um, homeopathy. Sometimes you take some drops and the uh, symptoms get worse before they get better. So that can happen with this as well. All of a sudden you think, well, I thought it's going away. Why is that all coming? It's only coming to, to see um, how much residue is still there. Do you still have beliefs there? Do you still have emotions there? And it's an opportunity for you to two-point that away. On any given day, you can only transform as much as your soul today lets you transform. That's the reason why uh, with this work nobody will ever get a mental breakdown or emotional outbursts because the soul only allows what you can um, cope with today. And if we could, and we could, um, two point something and it goes straight away away, A, this would be, I think, the most um, sold kind of miracle on earth, um, but there are layers and our belief systems don't allow this to happen overnight, most of us at least. Um, so you need to work on those layers. If we wouldn't have the limiting beliefs, if we still would be a four-year-old child who learns this the first time and somebody tells their child, this is working like this, the child would believe it because it believes whoever is um, around them and straight away it would happen for that child. So the more, again, you can also go into being that child, into playing with this, the faster this works too. I have um, weekly practice evenings at my place because there will be lots of questions usually coming up and it's sometimes nice to connect with the group again. I do suggest you find uh, one uh, person ideally from this group who you know or you can regularly work with, um, especially the first 30 days. Any new tool or any new thing we learn we need to do on a consecutive, uh, was it consecutive? Um, 
consistent basis and it has to be 20, ideally 30, but it has to be 21 days at least in order for you to create new neural pathways which then create new habits. You want this to become your new toothbrushing habit. And when you reach the point you don't think about it anymore, then it's become a habit and it runs on autopilot and you do it all the time. But until that happens, um, responsibility and work is in your, um, in your court again. So you have to make an effort to make this work. And I can guarantee you it does. So on Thursday nights, um, 7.30 to 8.30 at my place, it is at, at the moment it is that night, um, we ch sometimes change it according to the needs of the group, but at the moment it's Thursday 7.30, I sent you the details, and nobody has to say they are coming or they're not coming. It's, um, I'm always there, people come in, and it's not a major um, um, talking session, it's really practicing and asking the questions you, which came up, um, and then after an hour we leave again. So that's something I offer. I also send you, at least in the first 30 days, every now and then a little reminder, a little email, a little quote, a little something, and will bug you and say, <laughs> have you done your two-pointing? Not because I want to annoy you, but I really am very fond of this, and I know uh, it has changed um, so many lives I know, and it has changed my life um, dramatically, so I really want people um, to use it. The uh, biggest thing for me is, uh, and I shared that with Richard before, I don't uh, think, uh, once you, when you do this, everybody will be happy. Uh, happy is a huge big word. For me, um, happy basically means that I face my life full on every day with everything that comes and am not fearful. I have been living in fear and made fearful decisions for far too long. And what I want is just live this life uh, share my gift, which I do in the form of my magazine now, and enjoy what I'm doing. And be, um, I'm grateful I can live this. I mean, I had this uh, thing now with my sister too, knowing uh, life is, um, is a limit. I had a brother who died really early, so I was confronted with passing this body at some point. But I really want to live this year, and I'm not finished yet, and I have so many things I want to do. And I know we all can. We all are incredible, powerful beings. And we can all share our gifts. And I think it's time we do. And this is what this work does for me. That doesn't mean I don't have any problems anymore. I still get challenges and obstacles because I still have limiting belief patterns that bring them up. And I face them and I'm asking for them now because what I know is when they come up, I can transform them, and the more I transform them, the less I have of them. So I'm, uh, I'm challenging the universe and say, bring it on, rather than, I don't want to. <laughs> so that's why, um, why I really love this work and would love for you to bring out your gifts and, and share that with others too. Share it with as many people as you can. Right, and this is my <coughs> official um, round up and I just would like to uh, ask if you have any more questions or any feedback for me, Cynthia. Yes. Do you go through the whole explanation of it or do you do a shortened version of children? Kids don't need any explanations whatsoever. For kids things have to go fast <laughs> they don't have that much patience so um, I would use the fast method with them. Um, and again if they are if they're not open to it, uh, open them or if they're too fiddly uh, don't force it. Oh, teaching them how to use it. Yeah, I actually would teach them the fast version straight away. Because at, depending on the age, they don't know that much about emotions and limiting beliefs and that stuff. And the card house is something they can really quickly pick. And it's the card that will help them get remove the blockage. Yes, remove the blockage. Uh, and you don't even say remove the blockage. It's a card which when you pull it, the card house uh, dissolves. Yeah? One other thing I really want to recommend you to is asking questions. Um, and, and not just asking me questions, ask the universe questions. I, I, um, 
um, get up sometimes in the morning and say, what would it take for me to experience this today? And everything which is blocking me from experiencing, I just two point away. What would it take for me to find the perfect article? What would it take for me to be completely energetic today? What would it take? Just ask those kind of questions instead of asking, why don't I, why can't I have this? And why do I have to experience that? That's not getting you anywhere. If you ask those questions, the universe will answer you in some form or another. And this work will help you to be more open to receive that answer. And one thing a lot of people misunderstand with the law of attraction is there's three steps to it. It's the asking. Um, what's the second one, Kathleen? But, but the, this, the, the most important one is the receiving. But receiving does not mean sitting, or yeah, visualizing is the second one, uh, asking, visualizing, receiving. Uh, receiving does not mean sitting in my chair and waiting for something to happen. Receiving means taking action, because if you don't take action, the universe can't give you something. Taking an action, taking an action towards your intuitive idea um, helps the universe to provide you then uh, with what you want to receive. O often we think, um, um, you know, um, I, I do this and then I sit and wait and the better things are coming. Nothing is um, coming in your hands. You have to actually move. Conscious with synchronicities as well. And yes. Take note and act on them as well. It's really good. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of amazing what can happen. Hmm. And then it can happen really fast. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. when we are tuned yeah, in. You might pass you by and you might think that you might not do anything about it. So yeah. Back on. Yeah. Any other questions? No? Oh, that was your pen. <laughs> <laughs> Any comments? Feedback? Yeah. Yeah. Really interesting. I was just a bit um, confused with the House of Cards. Yeah. No, no, sorry. That was the short version where you don't have to go through all of this. This is automatically going um, for you at once. The only thing you have to do is one time the card and then you integrate resources. You don't go through emotions, belief systems. That's the reason why I like this. It goes through, it takes the whole package. Okay. Yeah? So you don't actually know what one of those Nope. Okay. And you don't need to. That's the other beauty. A, you don't need to know the problem, and B, you don't really need to know how things are happening for you either. If you have already a preconceived idea of how you want to receive something, then this is the only way you can receive it, and it's limiting again. So we don't need to know how things work, and we don't need to know what the problem is. That's um, the thing with the, with the car house, and, and I personally, I really quite like it. However, if I know, and I have done that actually the last three weeks. I know about one of my major limiting beliefs and I have worked just on that belief for a long time without touching the others. So it's good to, to know them all. But if you don't have a lot of time and you just want to get something, it's a whole package, you do the card house. Okay. Still all awake or are you now sleeping in? <laughs> in theta now <laughs> then sponge it all up well thank you very much for coming i really enjoyed this a big thank you to richard for being so kind and um, filming this for me and i really don't want to even see it <laughs> um yeah yeah i know <coughs> i know i too pointed not being um, afraid of those so that worked quite well and i wish you an awesome uh, rest of the day and um, send you an email and if you are um, ever happy to come on a Thursday just come in um. yes and sometimes I teach little other bits and pieces there's a, there's a lot more than this and we play a game which is quite fun which is quite intense and I'm working on my advanced seminar at the moment because I have so many things now uh, which I can't fill in one day. But we do little bits and pieces when we practice. Thank you very much. Thank you.